Hello everyone. Welcome to Anthropology Lecture Series. Today we will learn what is homogenization process. This question was asked in UPSC Civil Services Mains 2023 examination. This topic comes under Biological Anthropology with some inputs from Archaeological Anthropology. So let's see what is homogenization process. So as the name suggests and you can see from the slide, homogenization process is a transition. It's an evolutionary process from where a primate changes into a human form. The hominid uh, line of evolution is called hominization process. This is in fact the interplay of a lot of factors like cultural factors, anatomical factors, ecological reasons. All these led to development of humans. So first let's look what the ecological factors are the reasons behind this hominization process. Harvey Land in his 2011 publication had given a wonderful description of the ecological changes that took place during the Miocene epoch. This is a picture of a Miocene epoch that you see in the screen now. As you all know, in the Miocene epoch, temperatures came down, ice sheets started developing, tropical forests got reduced, which meant traditional air food became scarce. Due to this, primates which once lived in trees came down and started leaving the terrestrial ecosystem. So you can see here, grasslands, developed, uh, forests got reduced and thus apes started to live in the terrestrial ecosystem. So because of these ecological changes, this apes transition into a hominid species. For the ecological changes, the response was anatomical changes. Do you know what is the dif distinguishing feature between a primate and a human? If you think it's culture, no, you're wrong. It's not language either and not technology too. According to Richard E. a paleontologist, the distinguishing factor between a primate and a human is the ability to stand upright. Standing upright is a result of bipedalism. As you can see in this picture, this walking on two legs is bipedalism and this is the upright posture. First evidence of bipedalism was studied by Mary Leakey from a fossil remain or from Tanzania. This evidence is from Australopithecus afarensis. The ability to walk on two legs or bipedalism developed even before our brain development. This was observed by Raymond Dart in his study of the Australopithecus africanus uh, where he found that foramen magnum was placed forward in the fossil while the brain was similar to the brain of a modern ape. Now, for those who are wondering what foramen magnum is, this, this hole that we see here is a foramen magnum. And through this hole, spine passes. For uh, fossils, for fossil remains that we study, if the foramen magnum, the hole is in the anterior position, then the fossil is of a human. If the hole is in the posterior position, then the fossil is of a quadruped. So, the change in position of foramen magnum from posterior to anterior is an evidence of hominization process. Next, we look into the evolutionary changes that happened in the thoracic and pelvic region from chimpanzee to homo sapiens. The evolutionary uh, line, the evolutionary trend that you can see here uh, is first is a chimpanzee figure. Here you can notice the pelvic, this is a pelvic region. This is a pelvic region and here the bones, pelvic bones are elongated and parallel. Whereas look at Australopithecus afarensis, here the pelvic region is short and broad. Same is the case with Homo sapiens as well. Here it is short and broad. Now you can see this is the ilium region. Here the ilium region is much more broader than the chimpanzees. So as ilium region is broader, it, uh, it enables us to support our abdominal organs. And this also allows us uh, this aids in bipedalism. So this shape of our uh, pelvic region supports our abdominal organs as well as weight distribution moves to the hip region. Earlier, when knuckle walking was done by primates, uh, the weight was distributed in the lower back. This meant uh, the primates walked in a slanting position. For us to walk upright and for the weight to be effectively transmitted, this pelvic region became small and broad. So we saw the difference in uh, pelvic region of chimpanzee, afarensis, and humans. Now, another difference that you can notice in the picture is about the lumbar region. 
this part is called the lumbar region it's a part of our spinal cord here you can see the chimpanzee picture lumbar region is sandwiched between the thoracic region and the pelvic region so movement is restricted whereas when it comes to afferences the lumbar region is freed in humans too the lumbar region is free because of this free uh, position of lumbar region we can walk longer distance we can travel longer distance because of this uh, freeing of the lumbar region next we'll see the spinal cord the arrangement of spinal cord the curves in the spinal cord uh, when it came to upright position we can see there are three curves here cervical curve thoracic curve lumbar curve there is also sacral curve all these curves enables our straight position upright position is due to these curves again this is an evolutionary trait from knuckle walking from a slanting position where there was no curves we we got three curves in the spinal uh, cord and this uh, spinal bones and this allow for bipedal and upright posture next is the lower limbs here this is the lower limbs of a modern human this is the lower limbs of a chimpanzee and the middle is the australopith lower bones here in the image you can see here the lower limbs are small when it comes to australopithecus it becomes a little more bigger for humans it's much more bigger so this is an evolutionary trait the evolutionary direction is like this it increases in length here in this picture you can see the complete uh, image of how uh, the pelvic uh, differences along with the lower limbs are here the, it is more parallel uh, shaped here it's broad here it's short lower limbs here it's long you can see the evolutionary difference where uh, again it's supported by pedalism and direct posture how morphological changes led in the hominization process so next we'll see another characteristic of our femur angle which differentiates primates from humans again this is an evolutionary change from chimpanzees to modern humans we can see the change this angle is called the bicondylar angle here in humans this is a human uh, femur and in humans the bicondylar angle is around 8 to 11 degrees whereas when it comes to chimpanzees the angle is so small it's just 1 or 2 degrees so the degree angle uh, this angular range increased when it came from chimpanzees to modern humans next we'll uh, look into the evolutionary changes that happened in our foot here you can see a plantar arc a curvature shape this is a unique feature of humans earlier in chimpanzees and other primates it was flat shaped leg this plantar arc provides stability and uh, now next is next differentiating factor is the hallux hallux is a big toe for chimpanzees and other primates this hallux is opposable there you can change but uh, think of our toe we can't oppose it no it's uh, in alignment with our other toes so these phalanges phalanges are these bones that we find in the uh, fingers and the toes so uh, this hallux is parallel to the phalanges and uh, this is non opposable in nature this is also one of the evolutionary change that took place in the hominization process next anatomical change is that in the hand uh, the hand that you see here is the hand of a chimpanzee and this is a homo sapien hand here you can uh, see the difference thumb is small here thumb is little more large and here the fingers are long and curved whereas here the fingers are straight and short so here we have a precision grip and uh, this enables us to manipulate uh, things and with this tool making became possible uh, development of culture became possible art became possible all was due, due to the uh, anatomical changes that took place in our hand during the hominization process now as i told earlier uh, our hominization process is a result of is an interplay of multiple factors we saw ecological factors we saw anatomical factors now there are genetic factors that led to changes so genetic factors that led to changes are mutation genetic drift chromosomal aberrations and other genetic changes now there are cultural changes that took place during this hominization process earlier during primates it was simple group living now as the evolution progressed 
we can see there is complex family relations, kinship relations, all these cultural changes also aided in the homogenization process. Hope you liked our anthropology session. So we'll meet again in another session with another topic. Thank you. Thank you.